Ah, such a nice day at the beach. Did I just see hundreds of cockroaches along the waterline of East Coast Beach? Well, let's find out about that in our little red jungle. Wow, look, now you have so many plants and animals. Hey, hello. So, today I'm trying to suntan at the beach, right? And then I was actually chilling along these sandbags. And then when I looked down, I saw hundreds of these creatures. And like, wow, at first glance, right, they look like baby cockroaches. And they do actually have a nickname called Sea Cockroach. But luckily, uh, I came with my macro lens, right? So actually, if you look at them up close, okay, I see, uh, wait, they have seven pairs of legs and wait, 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 so many segments on their bodies. Okay, these sea cockroaches are not cockroaches. They are not even insects. So these fellas are actually isopods, which are actually crustaceans. So that makes them more closely related to your crabs and your prawns than they are to cockroaches. Right, and they do actually have another common name called sea slaters. And these sea slaters love to hang around your rocks and your breakwaters and of course these sandbags over here at East Coast Beach. And they hang on all of these places because that is where the good food is. So generally your sea slaters are dentritivores, which means they eat decaying matter. Right? And so a lot of times it's all the algae la and seaweed la and whatever other decaying matter that gets washed up and trapped on all these surfaces. And once they found a nice spot, right, these fellas were actually colonized in large numbers. And although I really found like a lot of them here at the beach, most people don't actually see them or know the extent of just how much of them there are here at beaches, right? And that's because sea slaters are very, very skittish. Like you see, any small movement I make, they run and hide. Right, and so when people see these small insect-looking things running and hiding and they can only see the rough shape for like a split second, it's very understandable why people mistake them for baby cockroaches. But okay, now if you ever see them on our shores, please, uh, you don't need to start screaming already, okay? They are not cockroaches, okay? You now know what they are. And to be honest, unlike your cockroaches, these sea slaters are not pests, right? Because they eat decaying matter, so that makes them kind of like the janitors of our beach, right? Because if you think about it, when you know the environment is wet and moist, then somewhere in our Singapore heat, right? Decaying matter becomes like a perfect environment for like diseases and you know that rottingness is just not very fun to be around when you're sun tanning at the beach, right? So these sea slaters actually help to get rid of that decay, right? And it actually brings about more benefits to us. Yo, I'm here for some behind the scenes, right? Because I had to share how hard it was for me to get these macro shots of the sea slaters, right? Just because of how skittish they were, right? In order for my macro lens to work, I had to really go up close. And when I do that, the sea slaters will actually run away and hide. <laughs> Right, so actually for me to get such a shot, I had to, you know, really find a nice, you know, suitable spot. I had to go close to the sandbag and just camp there and I cannot move. And I have to just wait and wait until the sea slaters feel comfortable enough to start coming out again and then I was already there, right? Yeah, and actually like in the whole process, right, I was getting bitten by insects, right? But the thing is, I couldn't move. I had to camp there and like, not move and these bites as you can see over here it lasted for days and it itched like crazy right and i think these are sand fly bites because it definitely didn't feel like mosquito bites but yeah despite that i think i got some really cool footage right so i think it's worth it right or at least i i hope it's worth it uh but yeah i just wanted to share some behind the scenes with the guys to you know share the experiences and the ups and downs of making a youtube video and you know to connect with you guys behind you know the the, the you know, what i show you in the video right but yeah that's all i just wanted to share that right okay so back to the sea slaters so, if we really zoom in to look at these beautifully weird creatures, right? You can see how bizarre and prehistoric they look. So yeah, like I said just now, right? They have seven pairs of legs. 
right? 14 legs, which is so cool. And then if you look at their backside, they also have a pair of two-pronged tails. And so because they actually also have antennae on their heads, even up close, right, I also need to properly see which side is the head la, and which side is the backside. But okay, I found a trick. You just need to find where the eyes are at and that it will help you out. But yeah, so at their backside area, all the way up, you know, to their pair of two-pronged tails, that's where they have gills. But yes, for these sea slaters, right, the ones that you find at our intertidal areas like our beaches, they breathe air, like, you know, out in the open air, right? But it must be through these gills that must be kept moist. I love the word moist. But yes, okay, so it's actually like a fine balance, right? Because clearly, these gills cannot dry out, right, in order for them to breathe. But at the same time, okay, now this is going to be a bit weird, huh? these sea slaters can actually still drown if trapped underwater, right? And that's because their gills have adapted to be in a way where they can't really function underwater, right? They can only function out in the open but just be moist. Which is like so interesting, right? Like, it lives on the edge of the beach, huh? It's related to your crabs and your prawns, but it still can drown one, huh? And yeah, that's the beauty of nature, right? You know, every creature has evolved and adapted to exist in this sweet spot, right? Everything has a niche. And I hope that the next time when you find a sweet spot to lay down and suntan at the beach, and then you see all these creatures, like cockroach-looking things running around, Remember, don't need to be scared, they are not actually cockroaches, right? You've got nothing to fear, right? Because again, these sea slaters are super timid, super humpty, right? But at the same time, so important for the cleanliness of our beaches. And also, come on, they look kind of cool and kick-ass if you observe them up close, right? Truly amazing creatures. And that is all I have for today's episode. But again, before we leave, I'd like to give a big shout out to our patrons. Mr. Chu, Mr. Chu, Sportman, you know, no, 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 England, Hitcher Queen, Limpets, Muffin, Jets, Ping Hu, Master Jail Block, Tango, Amadillo, Neko Sama, Uncle Sam, Amelia, Uncle Kyung, Fauzi, Relano, Crooked Spider, Low Eli, Big Three Circles, Amy, Lou, Quack Quack, Mama and Momo, Pixel, Ama, and Shelby. Thank you so much for supporting this channel directly. And if you would like to do the same, you can find the link to my Patreon down in the description below. Do also follow me on my other social media platforms and subscribe to watch more videos of our local ecology. Thanks again for watching. And remember, keep your eyes peeled because you need to differentiate between cockroaches and sea slaters. Huh? Don't everything scream. Okay, just you know, chill by the beach, enjoy that suntan, and you know the world is a beautiful place. So dramatic, right? Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>